Hey, what's going on guys? Love to rip that paper off these new Megami device kits. This is the Chaos and Pretty Grandma. So I really enjoy the Chaos and Pretty subline of Megami device kits. This one is number 20 in the Megami device line. You might be thinking Grandma, that's kind of a weird name for a Mecha Musume model kit, but this one here is playing off of the Little Red Riding Hood. If you guys remember, we had the Red Riding Hood themed Megami device kit before, uh, and that had like the wolf head parts and it had the red hood, obviously that whole imagery. The Grandma is another character from that very tail and that's the theme for this one although I mean it does still have the wolf theme going on with it like the wolf parts that she has on there I'm not really sure what else really makes this too necessarily grandma themed but it's a wolf mecha themed Megami device girl here and it looks pretty awesome let's go ahead and check it out here for today's video all right so taking a look at the box art here in typical fashion we have the character illustration and the numbering and lettering everything in a glossy finish set against that matte black background always looks so nice here on the Megami device kits getting a nice close-up look here at the illustration here of the grandma character very nice there as usual and then the text down here telling us that the base design of Little Red whose stats focus heavily on melee combat is combined with the MSG Gatling gun and hand Gatling guns thus creating a model boasting extreme firepower. Sub AIs are installed in the three wolf heads they bear resemblance to Cerberus breathing hellfire when armed and fired all at once. This design is said to be inspired by user's ideas seen after the release of Little Red, where she was reassembled into wolf mode for battle. So that's kind of interesting, hinting there in the text that this was basically inspired by custom builds that they had seen after the release of Little Red. That's kind of cool, very interesting. You can see a pretty thick box here is on the side, the big number 20 and the illustration once again. And over here on the bottom of the box, a look at what the kit is gonna look like, all built up and painted. So it's got these big wolf Gatling gun arms and a big Gatling gun here on the back there as well. Front and back view of it with all the armor, without all the armor and a couple of action poses over here. Very interesting design. Here's what it's gonna look like without any paint, just built up directly out of the box. Looks quite cool. And then over here on the top, you can get a look at our face option parts that we have. Where is the eye patch face is what I'm wondering. I hope that's going to be an option. Even here on the water side decals, there's not an eye patch decal, interestingly enough. And the uh, MSRP here for this one at 8,500 yen. So it is definitely a little bit more pricey, but I mean, as you can see, it's a very thick box. And again, yeah, there you can see there's the face with the eye patch, like what we have on the box are right here on the front. So hopefully that's gonna be a part, something that we can actually make in here with the kit. Let's go ahead and get this popped open and we'll find out. And yeah, as you can see, it's busting at the seams with parts. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Here's those water slide decals for the eyes, the blushing cheeks and the mouth decals there. And our instruction manual is going to feature the same artwork from the front of the box on the back side, the Megami device logo there. On the inside here, we have some more images of the built and painted kit in a few different poses there, showing off some different poses that you can try out with this. The next page is going to start our parts list there with those grayed out sections being parts that are gonna be omitted that you're not gonna use, you're not gonna need here for this particular version. Then we get on into the construction. So we're gonna build the body and then all of the equipment and then put it all together. At the very end here, there's also going to be little bits about showing how you can customize this by swapping out the head for a frame arms girl head for example if you wanted to do that last couple pages here are going to be in color for the color and decal guide decals just obviously going to be for the eyes there's our color guide and a couple more reference images over here for you to finish off the manual all right so we got our pre-printed parts all here bagged up our three face option parts as well as this part here for the body it's like a black part with some bright green printed on there looks very nice and then we've got all of our hand parts here molded in black we've got the main tree of hand parts and then we do also have some bonus ones here added on this extra little hand part runner getting into the runners then runner a is going to be here in skin tone for a bunch of our skin tone parts and runners b c and d are going to be some more parts for the body here in black as runner B, C, and D. Runner E we have two of for some more joint parts here in flesh color. Runner F is going to be our standard Megami device display base. In this case it's not in a clear color as it typically is or a kind of metallic kind of color. It's just black in this case which is kind of interesting but it has a matte finish there with the glossy Megami device logo. Very cool. Runner G is a few more skin tone color parts there for in the head and arms. Then runners H and H1 are going to be our hair parts here in a very nice bright purple color and we've got runner i and i1 which are more parts here in black runner i runner i1 we have two of these 
for some more black parts there. Whereas M1 and N1, M1 being in red, a few pieces there, N1 being in skin tone. Where O1 is some more parts here in black. We've actually got three of these, one, two, three. The third one does have some more parts added over here on the side there as well. Where Q1, some more parts here in red. We've got two of those. We're in our R1 in a kind of lavender color here. We've got two of these for some more of the uh, kind of mechanical parts of the kit. Our S1 is in red. We've got three of these. That's going to be parts for the wolf head. Our U1 is going to be in a very light grayish cream kind of color here, off white. We've got two of those. Our V is some parts here in lime green. We've got three of those parts on there. I'm guessing this is uh, probably the eye parts there for the wolf. And then runner W, we've got a few more parts here in black. And then runners Y and Z, some joint parts here in black and in purple there for those. And then finally, our MSG weapons parts here for the Gatling guns. We've got two of those for the arms. And so these are going to be in that same kind of purplish color there, like we saw for the mechanical parts of the kit. And that's going to be it for all of the runners, quite a lot of them. Let's go ahead and build the kit. All right, guys, and here is Grandma all built up, and we'll take a look at adding everything onto the kit in just a moment. I just want to start off by taking a look at the most basic form. We'll go through all the accessories and then add everything on there, and then we'll take a look at just some different poses with all of her weaponry and extra accessories and everything kind of added on, but a really great looking kit. For the basic form here, it does look a little bit odd with just kind of this very kind of a slim body with not a whole lot of clothing on there and just kind of the hood on top of the head. So I think this is one that's definitely going to look like a bit more of a complete look overall once we have all the extra armor and accessories added onto there. We'll take a look at all that here. Let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start off here at the head, taking a look at a couple of our printed face option parts here. These look really, really nice. As always, you got some nice shading on there, beautiful colors, beautiful finish on those as well. Here's our third face option part. So definitely got a little bit kind of, well, at least two of the faces have a little bit more of a mean look to them. And then we have this kind of uh, laughing, innocent, trying to look innocent sort of face here, which does kind of fit the character, I think, right? We've also got our standard array of hand option parts from holding hands with the trigger finger extension to just your standard holding hands here. We've got the pointing fingers and peace sign hands here as well. And then for open hands, we've got open resting hands, open expressive hands here. And then of course, closed fists and weapon holding hands here with a fixed wrist joint in there in case you have a particularly heavy weapon, which we do have with this one. Now let's going back to the head for the moment. If you did want to have the head without the hood on the back, you do have a hair part here for the back. So you could have that displayed without the hood on the head, which I'm not, like I said, I do like the hood on there when you have kind of like the full armor set on, but in just kind of this basic form, I would honestly opt for just having just the hair on there without the hood. But we do have the more armored version of the hood, which has the wolf head on the front. So basically you're going to remove this part here on the front, replace that with this wolf head on here. And then we're also going to replace the chest piece. And the chest piece has like this bottom part of the wolf jaw right there. So it'll basically make like a wolf head kind of around her face here. And we have a couple other parts that we're gonna use to replace right here on the side where the pigtails are coming out. You're going to replace those with these kind of option parts in there like that as well. And then we've got these option parts here at the wrist. So you can replace those with these that have a three millimeter peg there sticking out on the side. And that's so that you can plug uh, the wolf heads onto there if you wanted to onto the wrists. And then down here at the thigh, a couple of options. Instead of this like frilly part right there, you have just this skin tone ring part there if you didn't want to have any of that frill detail on there. But for the armored state, we're actually going to switch that out for this more kind of armored look. Instead of this uh, fabric sort of look right there. You have just like this armor kind of piece here, which actually does match a little bit more with the hood up there on the head as well. And then down here at the feet, these nice little black shoes that she's got there are going to be replaced by wolf feet here as well. So you're just going to swap those out just right here, actually right above the ankle at the bottom of the lower leg right there. And these do have some nice articulation in that you can move the entirety of the claw like that. And then you can also move like the front three claws to be a little bit more open like that there as well. So pretty cool claw there. And of course, we've got our standard Megami device style base here. Now at the top, we have this connection piece here, which will plug straight into the back. But if you needed, you have one that is set at an angle. And then we do also have an additional piece here that if you needed it to get a little bit more clearance, from the base, you can use this option piece connected onto there like that to connect into the character's back. Oh yeah, one more accessory to mention here is about the eye patch that you can see as one of the face options in some of the artwork and even on the box art. It's unfortunately a piece that you just have to glue onto one of the faces if you want to use that. I think probably meant to be used with this face option part here. You just have to 
glue that onto there. So it's unfortunate that we didn't get an, one of the face option parts as just kind of having the eye patch just kind of printed on there or something like that. I think I would have preferred. So you actually don't even have it as an option to use as a decal either to just put like a decal of an eye patch over the face. So it's a cool accessory to have and you can use it if you want to. I think it could have been handled in maybe a little bit different way so that you don't have to actually glue this onto one of your face option parts. But unfortunately, that's just how they opted to handle that part. That brings us to weaponry. So here we have our two arm Gatling guns and these are going to go basically replacing the arms. And so this is going to be your new elbow joint right there. This is just going to replace that part at the middle of the upper arm. And you can kind of rotate the head on here a little bit the wolf head but basically it's just going to be on there like that giving us some additional hoods kind of like on the side of the arm there as it were and of course our big gatling gun which this is going to plug into the character's back giving us this kind of weapons rack here on the back which you could plug more stuff onto if you wanted to if you really wanted to load it up but this can also of course then be just used over the shoulder for this big massive gatling gun and then you have these parts on here which can be taken off and used as handheld weapons so you do have some melee weapons in here you can take those off and use those if you wanted to and now there is actually another mode too that we can do with this where we're actually going to take off this giant gatling gun off the backpack this is for the kerberos mode and this can just be used for your arm weapon this again just being your upper arm part here so this is going to be your one arm and you'll have the other arm is just the standard arm and then we can plug the other two smaller gatling guns here onto the backpack so those will be on the back and so it'll basically be like your standard kerberos right between these three wolf heads like the two on the sides and then obviously the character there in the center and i'll show you how that looks here in just a second idea that there's a lot that you can do with these as usual and that's kind of what i always say is one of the reasons why i enjoy the megami device line is that you get a lot of stuff in the box and there's also a a lot that you can do with it by mixing and matching the parts in different ways so as far as the main kit goes i won't really get too much into the articulation of it the articulation of this one is going to be pretty standard and you'll see that demonstrated here as we take a look at some posing but the kit as always looks and works very well but let's go ahead and get right into it trying out some poses here with this as we're getting to the conclusion of the review here hope that you guys found it interesting taking a look at the grandma kit here the chaos and pretty line is definitely one of my favorites i've really enjoyed the different kits from the chaos and pretty subline of megami device they've been a lot of fun very interesting really cool kind of very much themed how we had like the early ones were kind of like witch themed and then we have these that are obviously themed after the fairy tale so they definitely bring that little bit of extra personality to the characters being themed off of concepts rather than just kind of like a random here's a cool mechamusume design which i can certainly get behind but then you have that kind of added bonus of these have a certain theme to them which is pretty cool and of course as the standard to the line you just have a lot of really great detail a lot of really great part separation in there the articulation and everything and on top of all that the customization is just always going to be an important factor to pretty much all of the different lines that kotobukiya does but in particular with megami device frame arms frame arms girls you know these series hexagear would be another one that's like kind of very very much all about uh, customization so a lot of great stuff in here that we can use but then you have a lot more options even uh, when it comes to using different msg parts with this or using parts from this kit with a different kit mixing and matching and especially between these two like say for example you took this kit and the chaos and pretty queen of hearts you can mix and match parts between the two of those and make kind of your own amalgamation designs and so it's very cool and so it's absolutely a line of model kits that you can have a lot of fun with when it comes to making your own variations on the designs things like that so that's going to do it for this review guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below what do you think about grandma here and if you guys want to check out some more megami device kits for yourself as you know you can check the link in the video description to usa gundam store got all sorts of awesome megami device kits and everything else from kotobukiya there as well so definitely check those out and as always guys thank you so much for all your support too making sure you leave a like making sure that you're subscribed really appreciate it thank you so much until next time i hope you all have a great day see you guys later Bye bye